Well, this is chapter 12 and lecture number four. And in this lecture, we'll discuss the Pacific Islands. We'll start here with the chart that defines the breakup of uh, or the breakdown of each of the subregions of the Pacific Islands with uh, Melanesia, um, Micronesia, and Polynesia. In Melanesia, Melanesia we see Papua New Guinea. Uh, has the largest population with over 7 million. The uh, other islands, uh, much smaller population relative to the um, size of the population of Papau and also the economic activities there. In Micronesia, the um, island of Guam, a U.S. territory, has the largest population with uh, the federal federated states of Micronesia and Kiribati, um, about uh, half of or a little bit more than half of the population of Guam. Uh, these two other two countries are, of course, independent uh, countries. With Polynesia, the U.S. state of Hawaii has the largest population with 1.4 million people. The uh, rest of the region has much smaller population, French Polynesia, uh, comes in second with uh, less than 300,000 people. Yeah, the Pacific Islands are also known as Oceania. The total population is only around 10 and a half million. There are about 30,000 total islands scattered throughout the region. Regional groupings include uh, Melanesia, named in reference to the darker-skinned Papuan people, people of the region. Uh, these islands are in the northern perimeter of Australia and eastward. Micronesia, or the small islands, are a group of islands north of Melanesia. And Polynesia, meaning many islands, are the largest groupings from Hawaii, New Zealand, um, and New Zealand, however, has begun to establish its own distinctive character in spite of its Maori heritage and ties to uh, Polynesia. The Pacific Islands are threatened by rising temperatures and rising sea levels. Many islands in the um, region are vocal about the need to curb excesses that feed global warming, Atolls with limited uh, land surfaces will find uh, replacement of groundwater reserves by natural processes increasingly difficult, thus making continued occupancy of some of these islands very problematic. For low islands, global warming is closely linked to higher sea levels and greater hazards of storm damage and erosion. Uh, it is also true that as a tectonic region, there are subvergent zones uh, that just naturally uh, have the islands lowering as they uh, plates slide under uh, larger plates in the region in tectonic movement. Higher global temperatures, in addition to raising water levels, also raise uh, sea temperatures. The coral reefs on which the low islands depend for storm protection are everywhere threatened by water temperature changes that promote species that attack coral or reduce their ability to process sunlight into food. Rising uh, sea levels threaten low islands whose highest point may only be a few me meters above present sea levels. Higher sea levels are also threatened to coastal environments on large islands and continents. Uh, they increase direct wave action against the coast and, pr coast and promote erosion. Settlements uh, produced are easily disturbed by storm action and ship propellers, which raise water turbidity and is harmful to many marine species. Uh, increased sediment movement and deposition can adversely affect coral reefs, which are sensitive to reduced exposure to sunlight. And of course, siltation is also a problem in management for port and harbor installations. Other serious environmental challenges include deforestation, uh, especially in Papua New Guinea's highland tropical rainforest, the uh, 
uh, degrading of soil, water, and vegetation by mining activities, damage to coral reefs by human activities, and ocean water warmed by climate change and saltwater intrusion into freshwater sources. To the Pacific Island, there were 23 political entities. We just uh, discussed a number of them at the beginning of this lecture. Four self-governing territories in free association with colonial rulers. Seven continuing dependencies of France. There is, of course, the country of New Zealand. One U.S. state, uh, Hawaii, and a mosaic of political structures that is a result of the region's complex colonial history and post-independence struggles. Here's a map we saw of the region earlier uh, in our Chapter 12 lectures. We see uh, all throughout the Pacific Ocean, the region to the west is Polynesia, with islands such as French Polynesia, uh, Hawaii to the north, the Cook Islands, um, of New Zealand, Tonga, Samoa, and American Samoa, uh, all being part of Polynesia and also including New Zealand. Melanesia includes Papua New Guinea, the Solomon Islands, uh, Bougainville, uh, uh, a island that is part of Papua New Guinea, uh, Fuji, and then as we move up to the northwest we see the Mariana Islands, Marshall Islands, and the Federated States of Micronesia. Oceanic challenges, originally agricultural and fishing-based economies where multi-cropping was very important to get a variety of foods and to take advantage of uh, some of the smaller islands and the needs. Societies changed as the outside world moved into regions here. The 20th century saw mining in some areas and gold, copper, nick nickel, petroleum, and natural gas in Papua New Guinea. Uh, New Caledonia, and a few other sites. Plantation agriculture also moved into the area. Um, examples of this are seen throughout places such as the larger islands of Hawaii. Some islands have rugged volcanic mountains. Uh, atolls are disappearing as global warming results in sea, uh, rising seawater levels. Additional challenges, adapting the global economy um, while being uh, geographically distant is, is a, a constant problem for the Pacific Islands. There are low levels of uh, health and low income. There are many cases of social inequities with a wide variety of ethnic groups within individual countries, especially in Papua New Guinea. There are weak governments, um, uncertain national identities with uh, many revolts on the far distant islands of individual countries and territories. Tourism provides some economic opportunities, uh, migration to urban centers due to environmental issues and lack of opportunity in rural places, uh, and are increasing some spatial imbalances. With regard to development, what comparative advantages do the Pacific Islands have? Remoteness and isolation relative to the global economies are problematic characteristics, but they may be assets for the tourism and offshore financial services. Uh, but what about the regional economy uh, based on the comparative assets among island countries? Perhaps these, some of these countries should form trade groups like uh, we have seen provide successful trade in places like Southeast Asia and South America. Papua New Guinea covers parts of three islands as well as many smaller ones. Uh, it is a collection of many clans with over 700 languages. The population is indigenous uh, Papayans and more recent arrivals from places like Southeast Asia. Uh, most live in very rural settings uh, and are subsistence farmers. Rich resources have not been used effectively and the wealth has been extracted from the society while leaving many uh, infrastructure problems 
and pollution left from the mind. The mountainous interior of the island of New Guinea has very few roads. The natural resources of timber, gold, copper, petroleum are difficult to exploit due to complex land tenure customs, uh, which make it necessary to negotiate the value of extraction of these materials with a larger number of people, uh, making uh, equitable payment to, Eru, to the people affected very difficult. Civil war on the island of Bougainville, uh, protesting rule from New Guinea, closed a large copper mine in 1981 since uh, this location has received uh, promises of autonomy and there have been movement to reopen these uh, the mines here uh, and provide a uh, more productive mining economy again. But pollution from mining is a large environmental problem. Hawaii, uh, the population of 1.4 million, is the 50th state of the United States. It's a string of mountainous volcanic islands. Uh, it's one of the most transformed populations uh, and is struggling to keep um, aspects of its Polynesian culture in place. Largely a tourist-based economy, although some manufacturing is occurring. Uh, Pearl Harbor is an important military base, and often that manufacturing is very directly tied to support of military personnel and military supplies necessary for Pearl Harbor. Uh, it has a large population, uh, especially large on the island of Oahu. It has a very decent agricultural base, pineapples, uh, very strong sugarcane, and a number of other crops. It does have an increasing Asian presence in its population. Guam is the largest island in Micronesia. Uh, it's a territory, unincorporated territory of the United States, and has been transformed by foreign occupation. It has a large military presence, uh, and once again, manufacturing and much of the economic activities um, are derived from that military presence and providing support for the military. Uh, it's a popular tourist destination for Japanese, who want to experience America in Asia. Why do the environments and cultures of Guam and Hawaii uh, have been so altered since the colonial period? Although much different in details, both Guam and Hawaii have experienced environmental and cultural change uh, by its recent history as uh, geostrategic locations within the United States governing sphere. World War II events, including the Japanese attack on Pearl Harbor in 1942 and the defeat of Japan, uh, the Japanese on Guam by U.S. forces um, entrenched in the Pacific Islands, uh, boosted the United States security interest here. Subsequent to World War II, Hawaii gained U.S. statehood and Guam has experienced dramatic increase in a military presence. New Caledonia um, is another country we'll discuss here quickly. The Kanak are the original settlers. As the Europeans arrived, many died from disease. Um, many of the remainder of these um, um, original populations remain confined to special reserves for them, economic and agricultural preserves. The uh, political and environmentally challenged region, uh, it's located on parts of multiple islands, the first Europeans squandered saddlewood trees um, and left the region to a road. It was colonized by French, by the French in 1853 as a penal colony. Asian and Polynesian settlers came uh, for large mining wealth. Uh, it has 25% of uh, the nickel reserves in the world in uh, the islands here. Unrest in the 1970s led to land restitution for the Kanak ethnic group in 1988. The island has um, several large nickel reserves and represents 90% of the gross domestic product for the country, and it has a severe environmental impact as, once again, much of the wealth is removed and uh, investments are not made back into uh, restoration of the environment. 
And so our summary of chapter 12, Australia, New Zealand, and the Pacific Islands are quite unlike any other world regions in nature of their diversity. In Australia, there is far too much land with too little water. In the Pacific Islands, there are vast amounts of water, but in most cases, very little land. Uh, in New Zealand, where water exists in frozen liquid and thermal heated states, uh, this paradise is threatened by tectonic hazards. The region occupies a remote but strategically significant part of the planet. Although far from Western, uh, the Western world in location, Australia and New Zealand are now Western in culture. Past trade relationships with the United Kingdom were strong historically. Uh, both Australia and New Zealand, however, are in the process of reordering, of reorienting their economic relationships largely towards countries in the Pacific Rim. And that's it for chapter 12. Uh, it's also our last lecture for this semester. I want to thank you for participating in the class. It's been a lot of fun and I hope you do well on the test. Um, I'll talk to you uh, soon through some updates in our announcements. Thanks for being here. Bye.